Notion that watching age group approved TV reality shows is a good way for teenagers to learn about human relationships. Part of the complexity of this debate today comes from the from, comes from the range of shows that reality TV covers. So for the purposes of clarity and feasibility, we have chosen to use the most watched non-scripted TV shows that involve non-professional actors as the basis of our debate. These include shows such as American Idol, The Apprentice, and Survivor. It's also important to take into consideration the words, it's a good way to learn. Please note, ladies and gentlemen, the motion doesn't say that reality show is the only way to learn or even the best way to learn, but simply one good way to learn about human relationships, which is what we'll be arguing today. Finally, to learn can be basically taken as the acquisition of knowledge or new insights. I'll explain to you how the basic premise of a reality show is didactic by nature. I will also demonstrate that reality shows beat those scripted ones when it comes to learning about human relationships. Our second speaker will explain that most of the reality shows today are showing at prime time on censored television and do in fact reflect our society's values and thus are good platforms for teenagers to learn. <coughs> Our second speaker, our third speaker, will sum up our case. Ladies and gentlemen, we say that when real people participate on reality TV shows, then we really learn about human relationships. Reality shows, by their very nature, are didactic. Everyone watches to see how the participants will react and or perform. How many times have you turned off a movie or TV shows <coughs> because you knew what was going to happen next or how it would end? As soon as you can guess, it is no longer interesting. But who could possibly turn off a season finale of Survivor or American Idol? We continue to watch because we want to know. <coughs> no, need to find out what the final outcome will be and why. And finding out is learning. This intense feeling of wanting to know makes reality TV shows excellent platforms for learning. How much learning would take place in school if the motivation was this high? Furthermore, when we want to learn about human behavior, reality shows almost always beat our scripted ones. Scripted shows are contrived and follow predictable plots by glamorous but out-of-touch Hollywood actors in unrealistic settings, but not reality shows. If you really wanted to know what it would be like to work in a high-stressed corporate world under a megalomaniac boss, what would you do? Would you watch Donald Trump's <coughs> the Apprentice, or do you think Michael Douglas's Wall Street <coughs> theme is more realistic? Ladies and gentlemen, when real people participate on reality shows, then we really learn about human relationships, and therefore the motion must stand. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the affirmative side just said that um, it is the best, not only the best, or only a good way to learn uh, human relationships through the uh, TV reality shows. And she said that it is interesting. But the thing is, we are talking about educational purposes. We are learning about human relationships, but not for entertainment. Today's motion is that watching age group uh, approved TV reality shows is a good way for teenagers to learn about human relationships. The definition just, um, the feminist side just mentioned, we agree with that, but for some say the good, the word good, is actually with reference to um, Oxford and Webster's dictionaries, it means of high quality, morally right, and beneficial, which is not exactly what we have in reality shows. Take a look at the um, Apprentice famous show. We see people attacking their teammates uh, because of their ineptitude and incompetence. They blame each other of their own faults and even evade from responsibilities. And arguments often turn ad hominem with prejudice, stereotypes, and all kinds of insults. Our emphasis is that it is only for entertainment, those reality shows, and not for educational purposes and it can subconsciously corrupt teenagers' mind of perception of human relationships, which can result in a poor relationship, of course. And um, Jade Goody, a participant of the British 
reality show Big Brothers was accused of racism because she verbally attacked uh, the opponent, uh, Bollywood actress Shilpa Shetty. And our point is that we should learn human relationships positively through honesty, humility, empathy, considerations. These virtues, they should be treasured. On the contrary, vices like deception, betrayal, irresponsibility, and conspiracy should be repelled. And those values are exactly what we learned from reality shows, even we didn't want to. And also, ironically, teenagers, I don't know why, teenagers are so mesmerized by the theatricality of these reality shows, knowing that it's not exactly real. And they are advised only not to watch, uh, to watch it with the parents, but they simply can choose not to. So our second speaker, Alex, will um, further elaborate on how such a choice will lead to subconscious effects. And so, if there are so many wrong elements in watching reality shows, wrong elements, sorry, why should we consider it a good way of learning human relationships? Therefore, today's motion must not stand. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Some people today often try to discredit reality shows by picking on a few unpleasant examples. But we must not fall victim to the fallacy of dramatic instance. We all know that a few best examples are not the overall whole. Let's, uh, let's not allow a few pit petty examples to cloud our ability to reason. The question before us today, ladies and gentlemen, is can teenagers learn both good and bad things about human relationships from reality shows? And we say that when real people participate on reality TV shows, then we really learn about human relationships. And so, the answer is an emphatic yes. But before I begin my main argument, let me address a few erroneous comments made by the negative team. They say teenagers may see inappropriate actions or undesirable forms of behavior. And we say that this is a part of learning of about human relationships. You gotta get the, take the good with the bad. They try to discredit reality shows by bringing up a few bad examples. But let's remember, these are a few exceptions and they don't represent overall whole. Now I would like to turn to my main argument. The popular reality shows we have mentioned today are all aired during prime time on major television networks. And according to the ratings company AC Nielsen, most of the prime time reality shows are watched by the entire family, which, by the way, no other prime time show can boast. Furthermore, CNN Entertainment claims that reality shows rank high in popularity contain no to no violence and offer unfiltered and sincere glimpses into the human psyche. Some of these glimpses can be unpleasant, but this is at the cost of reality. And let's not forget, forget the overall message of these shows. American Idol, believe in yourself, do your best and you might make it to the top. Survivor, adapt to your surroundings. Be a good team member and you will survive. The apprentice, work hard, be a fair leader, work as a team, and you get promoted. And following these wisdoms might just get you through to the next round in life. Don't, and you either be fired or get yourself kicked off the island. Thus, in a nutshell, reality shows are popular among families because they reinforce our values, such as believe in yourself, work hard, and be good to your fellow team members. How can the negative team possibly be opposed to teenagers learning about these values? Ladies and gentlemen, we say that when real people participate on reality shows, then we really learn about human relationships, and therefore the motion must stand. Thank you. We'll continue the debate.